So starting out, uh, as Dr. Sweetsu said, my study is perceived competence and roles in public relations. And uh, what I looked at is the elements of knowledge, skills, abilities, uh, level of formal education, and experience through the lens of public relations competence theory. In order to kind of, in order to explain how uh, perceptions of competence change, and how those are all affected. Um, public relations competence, as a, a definition, is the quality of meeting the needs and expectations of publics who interact with practitioners, but as perceived by the interacting publics. So we're really getting into perceptions there, uh, and context plays it as well. Um, the distinguishing facet there, again, is the context and the perception. So at the core of public relations competence theory is um, the interpersonal, the model of interpersonal competence, which is constructed of the communicator skill, communicator's knowledge, motivation, the outcomes, and as I was saying earlier, context, which allows you to look at different angles and how those are perceived. Now, previous research, research has shown that the language also plays a big part in this. Um, so looking at public relations specifically, we see that there's creative elements as well as skill elements. This means that there's both prescriptive language of values, so your subjective nature, as well as descriptive language of facts, which is your objective. Now the problem with that is, is um, prescriptive doesn't have a basis for judgment. There's not a set you can say this is, this isn't. It's more as well subjective. So um, there's not a way to specifically measure it. Now, if you take that into perception or in, in looking at public relations practitioners and the way that we're perceived, many times a practitioner is perceived competent based on a single instance. You were competent because you met organizational goals or you did something in a crisis comp situation. And that becomes the, uh, the benchmark. That becomes the element that you're subjectively based on. Now that could be different than the next practitioner, but it's not really a descriptive, it's a prescriptive, it's value-based, not objective. So when I looked at that, I decided I was going to try to find a way to bring this together. So in looking at um, the literature out there, uh, I synthesized a, the concept of professional advancement, which basically brings together knowledge, skills, abilities, your KSAs, as we keep kind of calling them. Um, your education and your experience into one concept that can then bring about the ability to objectively, or bring an, an objective nature to it, um, or objective nature to measure it. Okay, so looking at how I designed the research, um, the study employed a survey of two distinct groups, uh, public affairs officers, and I did actually go get U.S. Navy public affairs officers for this one, uh, we use the census, as well as collateral duty public affairs officers, snowballs. And then um, leadership, so the dominant coalition. So I also surveyed leadership across the board, TICOMs, ship CEOs, sub CEOs, um, Now, I did this in such a way that we can kind of do co-orientation. So you could look at two different groups, not necessarily one-to-one, -one, but in a community-to-community, -community, and look at how that changed the perceptions of competence. Um, both groups are given the same survey. Uh, the only difference is leadership, when they saw the competence questions, Instead of, I have, I know, I understand, it said my commands PAO has, my commands PAO knows, my commands. So they saw the same exact survey, it's just looking from one to the other. Um, okay, now the method. Um, there really only is one other study on this, uh, and that's Dr. Gazelton back in 2006 had run the initial study on public relations competence. So I took his initial scales and we re ran it, showed that it. Our results were very similar to his, same liabilities, same basic results. And then we took out the public relations roles questions from this. Uh, so your knowledge, skills, and abilities, but from a technician side, from a manager side. And uh, we re-ran it through factor analysis and got two different factors out of it, a, a manager one and a technician. Check the reliabilities, a great reliability, and use that for the basis of three different um, tools to build on descriptive language so that we can more objectively look at public relations practitioners. Um, so those three tools that we built was a strength, strength recognition score. Basically we took the KSAs, the knowledge skills and abilities, for both manager and technician, and we took the uh, agree or agree strongly questions and basically said, okay, anytime you agree, agree strongly, we code that as that's part of their strengths. 
and that was part of a, a strength recognition score, or SR, strength recognition score movement. And then I invert. Okay, if they disagree, they're recognizing weaknesses. So the disagree and disagree strongly became the weakness recognition score. So I have two tools now to kind of peel apart what different practitioners self perceive as their strengths and weaknesses, as well as uh, what leadership self perceive or perceive of them. And then the last one was kind of a combination of all of this. I took the, the KSAs, I took both manager and technician, I took the education, and I took the um, uh, experience for both manager and technician, combined it into the public affairs quotient, or sorry, so the professional advancement quotient. Um, and that basically gives you one continuum, 300 points, just like an IQ, IQ that somebody could be 50, it could be a 250. And broke that up into four levels for descriptive, so that you could be an entry, a novice, an intermediate, or an advanced, which adds on the existing typology of entry and advanced, but gives you the transition. So you can see how you kind of move through it. Okay, now getting into my uh, hypothesis. I'm going to do a little bit more reading here so I don't mess this up, but if a PAO with entry or novice level professional advanced has not directly observed the PAO, with an intermediate or advanced level of professional advance. The lack of a reference will cause them to overestimate self-perceived strengths and, under, and underestimate self-perceived weaknesses. Now remember, I'm looking at public affairs officers who actually do this full-time, as well as collaterals, part-time. Okay, so this one was absolutely confirmed. Um, the strengths, uh, the SRS and WRS both show that their the descriptive language allowed the people to self uh, look at themselves and leadership look at themselves. And just to show you that there are two differences here, there was significant, statistically significant differences found in public affairs quotient between the two groups. So public affairs officers and collaterals are different. Um, and that's looking at equal rank and demographics. Also, um, collateral duty PAOs have significantly less experience than kind of expected, but just to test that, so it is significantly the same they have less. Now with that, here comes the fun there was no statistically significant difference in how they rated themselves. They think they're us. They think they are the exact same thing as a PA. Okay, so that was uh, very interesting, especially when we look at the ensigns. The ensigns were higher than everyone else. So the least experienced in the group has the most uh, basically assessment of what they can do on a technical side. Okay, so what does this mean to you? Any of you have a PA over here, and if any of you has a collateral, um, the big point I'll put is they don't know their limitations. Okay, so I'm going to move on now to my next one. A PA with entry or novice level professional advancement who self perceives limited weakness and high strengths will be perceived as incompetent by the U.S. Navy leadership. This was confirmed. In every single case, leadership evaluated the collateral PAOs to have half the strengths and double the weaknesses that the collateral duty PAOs perceive. Um, and I was using T tests, uh, basically looking at both. So essentially, they had as much strengths, or they thought they had as much strengths as they just thought they had weaknesses. That's a small problem. Um, moving on to my next one, process three. If U.S. Navy officer in leadership position is not directly observed a full-time PAO with an intermediate or an advanced level professional advancement, he or she would perceive all PAOs to have the same competence as the entry-level or novice-level collateral PAO that they've observed. This one was actually proven false. I was wrong. Now, the majority of the leadership actually said there is a difference in the competence. However, there was a larger variance in their answers for those that did have collaterals versus uh, PAOs. They basically didn't know what the difference was. They knew there was one. But they couldn't exactly specify what. So I'll jump to my last one. So, yes, those that had PAOs had were... Yes, so if, basically if you look at those that either have uh, PAOs um, or don't, do they know the difference? And the trick, yes, they, they do. And originally I didn't think that was going to be the case. Um, so the, uh, in my hypothesis four here, if the U.S. Navy officer in a leadership position is directly observed a full-time PAO with intermediate and advanced level professional advancement, he or she will clearly differentiate between PAOs with low levels of professional advancement versus high levels. That was confirmed. So um, I looked at it, and it clearly differentiated. In the T-test, they show the leadership had a significant and distinct view of collateral duty PAOs versus full-time. Basically, the collaterals were valued as having less strengths and more, significantly more weaknesses than the evaluations of full-time PAOs. In every case, 
The only exception to that is the weakness for technical, and that's because no technical was actually, there was no weakness given by the leadership for the PAS. So there's nothing I can do. Okay. So, okay, that wraps up my time. I'm getting the stop signals from all around. Um, I'll now open up for your questions. Thank you.